Welcome to the ninth day in the Python 30 series. In this video, we are going to continue our discussion on Python exceptions and talk about specific built-in exception classes provided by Python. So, if you haven't watched the previous video, make sure to click on the i link or check the description below for the link for that video and watch it because that will give you a base on how to deal with specific exception classes in Python. In the Python documentation, it is clearly mentioned that all built-in non-system exiting exceptions are derived from this exception class. In fact, also user-defined exceptions are also derived from this exception class. So, basically, whatever error you catch with the specific exception classes like arithmetic error or lookup error or key error or value error, you can catch all of those exceptions by using the exception class directly. However, each of those methods have their advantages and disadvantages. So let's talk about using specific exception classes in this video because we have already covered this topic in the previous video. And then we are also going to discuss what are the advantages and disadvantages of both the methods. Let's start our discussion by talking about something very simple, zero division error. This happens when you are trying to divide a number by zero. Now, if I run this code, as you can see, I have 1 divided by 0 within the try block and then I'm trying to catch it with a 0 division error. If I run this, you can see Python catches the exception and the program does not end abruptly due to this error. So this is how 0 division error is dealt in Python. Now there is another kind of error that I would like to talk about and that is an overflow error. What is an overflow error? Well, when an arithmetic operation has exceeded the limits of the current Python runtime, then it is an overflow error. So for example, I have two variables here, i and j, i is equal to 1 and j is equal to 5.0. And then within the try block, I have a for loop where I'm trying to calculate the exponent of j. So within the range of 1 to 1000, it is going to calculate the exponent of j, j to the power i. Now the point where this arithmetic operation exceeds the limits of the variable type, there it is going to raise an overflow error. So basically huge floating point numbers, those cause overflow errors. So let's go ahead and run this. As you can see, it says overflow error happened at 7.523 e to the power 83. So basically this is the limit up to which this variable j can hold the value. After that, it is going to raise an overflow error as in this arithmetic operation has exceeded Python runtime capabilities. So this is how an overflow error is raised. If you look at the documentation, both the zero division error and the overflow error are part of the arithmetic error. So you can also catch each of those errors by using arithmetic error instead of specific zero division error or overflow error. So let's try it out. So here I can say arithmetic error as e print e so let's go ahead and run this and then you see arithmetic error class is also able to catch the division by zero error similarly here if we go and change it to arithmetic error and let's also change this and now if i run this you can see again arithmetic error is able to catch an overflow error so basically, you can either go with specific zero division error or overflow error, or you can also go with arithmetic error. Arithmetic error is basically going to catch any kind of arithmetic errors that happen in your Python code. Let's talk about another important error, and that is the key error. A key error is basically when you have a missing key in your dictionary. Let's go through this code. I have a dictionary here, and here I have key name and a value and a key language and a value. All right. Inside the try block, I'm asking for a user input and I'm using the input method and I'm asking what do you want to know about PyLenin. Now, based on their input, I'm going to print out the value of the key present in the dictionary. However, if the key is not present, I'm going to raise a key error and say that I'm unable to find the value that you're looking for PyLenin. So let's go ahead and run this. So it asked me what do you want to know about PyLenin. Let's say I say name. Okay, then it prints out Lenin Mishra, which is fine. But now let's go ahead and I want to know the age. And then it says unable to find age about PyLenin. So basically we are able to catch the key error, the missing key exception by using the key error class. 
So this is how key error exception class can be really useful when you are working with Python dictionaries. Now, similar to a key error in Python, there is also something called as index error. The way key error works on dictionary, index error works on list. So if you're trying to access an index from a list that does not exist, then Python is going to raise an index error. Let's look at this code. There is a list defined and then I'm asking for a user input saying guess a position. If the position is within the indexes of the list, then I'm going to print that particular element with that index. Otherwise, I'm going to raise an index error and say the list does not have an index of that particular position. So let's run this. So it is asking me for a position. If I say 2, then well, it is going to print out 3 because 3 is at index 2. But let's try to guess another bigger in, uh, position. Let's try to guess another bigger position. Let's say 8. And if I run this, it says the list does not have an index of 8. So we are successfully able to catch the index error by using this index error exception class in Python. All right. Now I have another question for you and pay attention because it is an important one. Here I was careful enough to pass an integer. Let's say I pass in a float. Let's say 3.5. Now we are unable to handle any exception because we passed in a float integer and now we have a value error. Right now in our code, we are only handling index error. So how to handle value error? That is when you can have multiple accept blocks in your Python code. So for example, here I can also add an accept block for value error. So I can say accept <coughs> value error print please only provide integers. All right. So let's go ahead and run this again. So I can say 3.5 and it says please only provide integers. So now it is able to catch both index error and value error. So basically in your try accept block, you can have as many accept blocks as you want. There is another way to write it. Instead of writing multiple accept blocks, you can also put all the errors in one accept block. So here I can say accept index error comma value error as E. I can say let's just print out e and also print out e dot class. All right. So if I run this now, so let's say eight and it says list index out of range class index error. And now if I say 3.5, it's going to say invalid literal for int with base 10 class value error. All right. So basically you can also have multiple error classes within one except block or you can have multiple except block. Let's talk about another error, the type error. So what happens when you're adding a list with an integer? Python is going to throw you a type error that you can catch by using the type error exception class. So inside this try block, as you can see, I have a list and I have an integer and I'm trying to add them. When I run this, you can see Python is catching the type error using the except block and is printing out can only concatenate list, not int to list. All right. So this is type error. Now another type of type error could be trying to call a non-callable identifier. As you can see here, I have a variable name and I'm storing file and in it. Now I'm trying to call the name inside the try block, but I am using parentheses, which means it looks like it is a function call. So when I run this, you can see that string object is not callable and it is handling that by using the type error exception class in the except block. So this is another kind of specific exception class that you can use while you are working with Python code. Let's now talk about errors associated with handling files. Let's say you're trying to open a file that does not exist. In this case, I'm trying to open a file called randomfile.txt. It does not exist. In that case, Python will throw you a file not found error. Let's run this code and as you can see, Python catches the file not found error in the except block and says no such file or directory random file.txt. Now file not found error is also part of OS error. So you can catch the same exception by using the OS error class. So now instead of file not found error, I'm using the OS error exception class. And when I run this, as you can see, it is able to catch the same exception. 
So in this video, we talked about a lot of specific error exception classes that are generally used in Python code. Now, what is the difference between using specific exception class and just going for the generic exception class? Well, there are programmers who are on both sides of the equation. Some programmers prefer to use specific exception classes because they think it makes their code more readable and also manageable. It also shows that you are in charge of your code as in you know what kind of exception your python code is going to raise and therefore you are dealing it in that particular way. Using the generic exception class means you are unsure of what kind of exception your python code might raise and therefore you are just using the exception class. However, if I am honest with you, I am more in favor of using the generic exception class. That way you can handle any kind of error that happens in your python code. So I like to use the generic exception class and within the accept block I like to log my error to a log file. So I can go back and check my log files for various kinds of errors and easily change them in my python code. I feel it's a more manageable and an easier way to handle errors in python code. But then again you can use specific exception classes in your python code if you're sure what kind of errors your python code is going to generate. It does make your code a little bit cleaner and a little bit more understandable. Having said that, I have also discussed a lot of other error types in my PyLanin blog. So go ahead to pylanin.com or check the description below for the link to various kinds of exceptions that can be raised with Python. In the next video, we are going to talk about building our own custom exception class. Thank you guys. I will see you in the 10th video.